Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll see how to upgrade an Ender 3 Max and turn it into something really special. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I am Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, I know several of you have been asking if this can be done, so today we're going to take a regular Ender 3 Max and turn it into... Are you ready for this? We're going to turn it into an Ender 3 Max V2 Pro. Wait, what? Yep, you heard that right. I mean, think about it. There's really not much that separates an Ender 3 Max from an Ender 3 Pro from an Ender 3 V2. So why not bring some of the more useful things from the others over to the Max? <laughs> Let's go through it. What does the Ender 3 V2 have that the Ender 3 Max does not? Well, it has a bottom-mounted power supply unit. It has an X-axis belt tensioner. It has a Y-axis belt tensioner. It has a handy tool drawer. And it has a color LCD in portrait orientation. Okay, so then what does the Ender 3 Pro have that the Ender 3 Max does not? It, well... Nothing, really. I mean, honestly, the Max is just a bigger Pro, with the CR6 SE's spool holder and a filament sensor. Adding Pro to the name of the beast we're going to create just makes it sound a little more over the top. More, it makes it sound cooler. Yeah, we'll go with the second thing. Okay, so what are we going to do to the Max to turn it into an Ender 3 Max V2 Pro? Yeah, that sounds like a name Apple would come up with. Well, anyway, first off, we're not going to change the position of the power supply. That's a pain, and honestly, the power supply is fine where it is. What we are going to do is add a screen from a V2. And we're going to add X and Y axis belt tensioners. We're also going to print a tool drawer box with two drawers. I modified some existing designs to make one that perfectly fits the Max. And finally, we're going to customize the Gyres UI Marlin firmware for the Max to take full advantage of the larger build volume and to set the printer's display name. Okay, now that we know what we're going to do, what do we need to make it happen? Well, we need an Ender 3 Max, of course. And this is the Ender 3 V2 screen module we're going to install. These are about 35 bucks. Along with the screen, you also get the mounting bracket, screws, and a cable. This is the printed drawer box and drawers and a 40 millimeter square. The square part bolts on where the old screen used to go to cover up the end of the extrusion and hold the drawer box in place. And here are the belt tensioners I purchased on Amazon. Frankly, I wasn't happy with the X-axis belt tensioner in the set because the bolt they used to support the pulley was too short. When I first took this out of the box, the nylock nut was barely on the bolt, but it was squeezing the tensioner so hard the parts couldn't slide. I was originally going to buy the tensioners as separate parts, but I saw a package deal and thought it would be okay. Turns out I was wrong, but fortunately I've collected various sizes of bolts and screws over the years, so I found a bolt that was the perfect length. I've got links in the description to the screen and to the belt tensioners. And I'm linking to individual X and Y belt tensioners because I don't recommend the kit that I bought. And remember, you don't have to purchase these tensioners. You can print your own if you like. Search things and you'll find a bunch to choose from. You can probably find some that reuse some or all of the stock hardware too. And last, we need the Gyres UI Marlin source code. So why do I keep turning to the Gyres UI Marlin firmware, and why for this project in particular? Well, a bunch of reasons, really. It's free. It's designed to work with the Ender 3 V2's screen. It's designed to work with the Creality 422 and 427 mainboards. I think the Max comes standard with the 422 board, and some people upgrade to the 427 board. But mostly because even though Creality ships the Max with a version of Marlin, Gyres UI unlocks a ton of Marlin's functionality that Creality leaves untapped. And it gives you probably the best possible user experience you can have with this screen and mainboard combination. And also, I recently made a video about editing and compiling it with this exact project in mind. So, if you didn't watch that one, now you have a reason to. Oh, one quick note. Since we're going to be replacing the firmware on the printer, it's probably a good idea to make note of any changes you've made to the printer's settings. For example, if you set a custom number of steps per millimeter for your extruder, write down what that value is. You can look these up in the printer's menus. 
The stock firmware may store these settings in a different area of memory than Gyre's UI does, so when Gyre's UI is installed, it may not know about those custom settings. So let's turn the printer off, get the hardware installed, and then we can turn our attention to the firmware. I'll start with the X-axis belt tensioner. Installing this is a matter of unbolting the old X-axis idler pulley assembly. Doing this releases the tension on the belt. Then unhook the belt from the side of the X carriage closest to the pulley assembly and set that end of the belt aside. Bolt the new X-axis tensioner onto the end of the X-axis arm. Pass the end of the belt over the idler pulley on the tensioner and reattach the end of the belt to the X carriage. Turn the tensioner's knob to adjust the tightness of the X-axis belt. We're going to have to remove the Y-axis idler pulley assembly and also remove the old screen in order to be able to install the printed drawer box. Once the drawer box is installed, we'll install the new Y-axis belt tensioner and then install the new screen. So let's remove that old Y-axis idler pulley assembly. Remove the bolts holding the stock pulley assembly in place. That releases the tension on the belt and then you can unhook the belt from the carriage. I'm doing this with the build platform still in place, but it's probably easier to unhook and hook the belt if you remove the build platform. So with the belt unhooked, you'll be able to remove the pulley assembly. The next thing to do is remove the old screen, and that's just a matter of removing the two screws, securing it to the front of the aluminum extrusion, and unplugging the ribbon cable from the back of it. Okay, so the reason we need the Y-axis belt tensioner and the old screen out of the way is because this drawer box is designed to slide in between the Y-axis extrusion and the old screen. It fills in that spot nicely, but because it fills it in and takes up that entire width, the parts that keep it from falling out ride inside the slots on the extrusions. And that means we need access to the front of those extrusions, which are ordinarily blocked by the Y-axis idler pulley assembly and by the old screen bracket. So those are out, and now the drawer box is in. Let's keep it in place with this 40 millimeter square secured with the screws that held the old screen bracket on the front of the printer. There, that looks nice. Okay, so now it's time to install the Y-axis belt tensioner. First, make sure the tensioner is loosened. Attach the new Y-axis tensioner assembly. Like the X-axis tensioner, this is held in place by bolts and T-nuts. My Y-axis tensioner assembly was a little bit wide, so after I had one side secured, I had to squeeze the other side up against the extrusion in order to get the T-nuts to rotate into place. Feed the belt through the new Y-axis tensioner and over the pulley, then hook the belt back onto the Y carriage. Again, the hooking on of the belt might be easier with the bed removed. There's not a lot of room for fingers in there. With that done, you can turn the tensioner's knob to adjust the tightness of the Y-axis belt. The final hardware bit to install is the new color LCD screen. Now in a few minutes, we're going to edit and compile the Gyre's UI firmware for the printer. And after it's installed, we're going to update the firmware on the LCD screen to get the prettier graphics. One nice thing about this screen is that it snaps in and out of its mounting bracket, so it'll be easy to remove when we have to take the screen apart to access the micro SD card slot inside it. Okay, so first we're going to attach the screen's mounting bracket to the side of the printer. It's held on by three bolts and T-nuts. Line up the T-nuts with the slots in the extrusion and then tighten the bolts to secure the mounting bracket. Then plug the ribbon cable into the screen. We're using the ribbon cable that's already on the printer. Finally, snap the screen onto its mounting bracket. Okay, that's it for the hardware installation. Now it's time to edit and compile the Gyre's UI Marlin firmware. There's an entire video about doing that and you can get to it from the link in the description or from this card right up here. In that video, I downloaded the source code directly from the part of the GitHub repository containing the code that's actively being developed. It was pointed out to me that it's better to get the code from the releases page. The code on the releases page is at a set version number. It's done and ready to go, frozen in time, and it's not going to change, whereas the in-development code may not be ready for prime time. So when you go over to that other video to watch how to edit and compile Gyre's UI, take a peek in that video's description to find a link to the releases page. Then scroll down to the bottom of the list on that page and download the source code.zip file instead of downloading the version that I did in the video. 
Okay, so you know that the Ender 3 Max has a larger build volume than the Ender 3 V2. In order to support that larger build volume, we need to change the maximum X, Y, and Z axis values in the source code. And this is exactly what I covered in that compile and edit video. I also show you how to change the printer's name as it appears on the screen. Coincidence? I think not. See, I made that video so I could make this one. The other video has all the detailed how-to steps, so what I'm going to cover in this video is the specific values that need to be changed to make this Ender 3 Max V2 Pro a reality. So let's get into the VS Code editing environment where I've already got a configuration.h file open. So the things we need to change are the X bed size, the Y bed size, and the Z max position. I'll search for X underscore bed underscore size and set that to 300. Right under it is Y underscore bed underscore size, and I'll set that to 300 as well. And just a few lines down, there's Z underscore max underscore pause. That's our maximum Z position, so I'll set that to 340. Next, I want to change the printer's name, so I'll search for custom underscore machine underscore name. I'm going to set that, of course, to Ender 3 Max V2 Pro. Now, a question that came up a few times in the comments of the Edit and Compile video is, what needs to be changed if you have a Creality 427 board instead of a 422 board? Well, a few lines above the custom machine name, there's a line that defines the motherboard as board underscore Creality underscore V4. That's the correct value for the 422 board. If you've got a 427 board, add 27 to the end of the motherboard definition so that it reads board underscore Creality underscore V427. So now I'll save these changes and then I'll compile the firmware by clicking the check mark icon down here at the bottom of the window. A minute or two later, I've got a .bin file ready for me. It's in the STM32 folder, located inside the .pio slash build folder. The firmware.bin file's name starts with firmware and ends with bin, and the fastest way I know of to get to it is to right-click on it and select Reveal from the menu. Then I can copy that to an 8GB or smaller microSD card, which I formatted as a FAT32 volume with 4K allocation units. With the firmware file on the card, I'll eject it, insert it into the printer while the printer is off, and then turn on the printer. About 10 seconds later, the Ender 3 Max V2 Pro is alive! Now keep in mind, everything we just went through I did really fast. If you want the full how-to on editing and compiling Gyre's UI, check out the Edit and Compile video. It's linked in the description and it's on this card up here. So at this point, although the Gyre's UI Marlin firmware is running on the printer, the screen still has the stock Creality graphics. And that's perfectly okay, Gyre's UI will work just fine with the stock graphics. But I like using the optional nicer graphics that are included with the Gyre's UI download. I see a lot of comments from viewers who are able to successfully flash the firmware onto the printer, but they have a hard time flashing the firmware onto the screen. What I've discovered is the screen is really, really super picky about the size of the card and the way it's formatted. So make sure you're using a card that's 8 gigabytes or smaller, and make sure it's formatted FAT32, and make sure it's using 4K allocation units. As a side note, when I format the cards on my Mac as FAT32, I don't have the option to specify the allocation unit size, but it always works. So like I said, I've got an 8 gigabyte card properly formatted. I'm going to copy the dwin underscore set gotcha folder from the firmware sets folder that's inside the display firmware folder that's inside the Marlin 135B folder that I got by expanding the source code.zip file. And I'm going to paste that into the 8 gigabyte card. Then I'm going to change the name of that folder so it's just dwin underscore set. No trailing spaces, no leading spaces, no other characters, just dwin underscore set. Then I'll eject the card and remove it from the computer. Back at the printer, I'll turn it off, and then I'll unsnap the screen from its bracket and unplug its ribbon cable. And then I'll remove the four screws holding its case together. You may have to use a bit of gentle prying, but after removing the back of the case, you can see the microSD card slot. Insert the card into the screen's card slot. Then plug in the ribbon cable. And finally, Turn on the printer. 
When the printer powers up, the screen should be blue, and then after several seconds, it will change to red. If the screen does not like your card, or it does not like the name of the folder you put on the card to flash its firmware, it will go from blue to red really fast, like after only about a second. If that happens, turn off the printer and remove the card from the screen. Make sure the name of the folder on the card is just dwin underscore set with nothing else in the name. And if that wasn't the problem, reformat the card as FAT32 with 4K allocation units, and then put the dwin underscore set folder back on the card and try it again. But as long as you've got the card formatted correctly, and the card is 8GB or smaller, and the folder is named correctly, it should work. Once the screen has changed to red, turn the printer off and remove the card from the screen. Unplug the ribbon cable. Snap the back cover on again and secure it with the screws. Plug the ribbon cable back into the screen and snap the screen back on the printer. Turn the printer on and let it boot. Once it comes to life, it's probably a good idea to go into the control screen and reset to defaults. And if you had any custom values you need to set, like steps per millimeter on your extruder, do that and then go to Control and then Store Settings to make sure they get saved. And now you're done. Bask in the warm glow of success. Because now, instead of a plain old Ender 3 Max, you've got one that has X and Y belt tensioners. And it has not one, but two tool drawers. And not only that, your printer also has an awesome color LCD and gyres UI, which in my opinion, gives you possibly the best Marlin experience possible for this printer. So enjoy your newly customized Ender 3 Max V2 Pro 3D printer. The two of you are going to make great things together. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. To the max! Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.